Welcome back to the Adonai Gameplay Animation Workshop. Today we're gonna look at housekeeping of code. So, as long as you are in Unreal and you are working with the blueprinting system, over time your blueprints are going to start looking something like this, right? Where you have your code everywhere and then eventually this just keeps expanding over and over again and it gets harder and harder to understand where you put your code how your variables are working where to look for them so while you do have the search for the find results where you can probably put any variable so for instance if i do is sprinting it's going to point me to everywhere where i can the variable is being used right but still this is going to be a lot more uh, time intensive in terms of looking for your resources so instead, we are going to prepare ourselves doing something known as the organization of nodes. Right. So there are three different types of things that we can collapse. Let me go ahead and just create a tiny little function, right? And pick Eli. Um, okay. So we have just a tiny little function. This is just our little code block. So every time I press Y, it's going to set the value and for something. Let me actually just do this instead here. Set prone. It's going to set the value of prone. And then if you want something to do with this along with is aiming, yada, yada. We're going to do a little print string at the end stuff like that it's going to return the value true so this is just a sample code right it's a, something similar to what we have here which is our test and learning code so it's only here for our test purposes it doesn't serve any other purpose so the first thing we're going to learn about is how to collapse this into a node and what exactly is a node so if you right click while you have something selected, if you right click generally, then it opens the actions for blueprint. But if you have something selected, then you press right click. You can see there are three different things that you can collapse your code into. There's collapse node, collapse to function, and collapse to macro. What collapse node does is it's going to basically make a folder, right? This is a folder. And inside this folder, you have all your code and it works the same way. And this is going to be a unique folder. So like uh, if you duplicate this, if I do control W, then it's going to create a folder too. If I duplicate that, then it's going to create a folder too, too. It's going to uh, have a different name. So even though your code is the same on the inside, it is duplicating it differently. Right, so inside this, this uh, collapsed node, you also have the input and output execute pins. So if you want your code block to continue running after things, or if you want it to have other variables, you can add those by clicking on the details panel. And the way you select this is either by clicking output or input and then adding those. And once you go outside, you will see that your code block is now updated to uh, feature those parameters. Right, so let me go ahead and expand these nodes instead. Oh, that's the wrong button. Expand node. Like now that I've expanded this back again, you can also let Unreal automatically do things for you, such as creating the input and output pins. If I only collapse these three things, collapse node, then it's automatically going to have uh, the collapse node with everything already set up. Sure, you can change the name if you are not happy with the name that you got because usually booleans they refer as A or B. They try to get the name value to return to something, but most more often than not, you're going to have to change these values. Okay, as you can see, the organization on this looks kind of weird. So you can change that by moving these pins up and down over here. And that's where move the parameter down the list and move up the list. And then on the inside, it's also going to be the same exact thing. 
and this time instead of us dragging and dropping something uh, onto the output so that we have a pin for it, uh, Unreal did it automatically for us. You can also do uh, something like this. Uh, let me use a get instead where you can directly drag a pin to the output node and it would uh, directly make the float variable for you. So instead of clicking our new parameter right here, you can go ahead and do that. And this is valid for everything and including HUD references, anything you can do. So output will be able to take any node because what this is, is just a simple link between the outside and the inside of it. Right, even if these are empty, like we're never going to run into compiler issues. Okay, so let me go ahead and delete those two. And let me let me show you guys what a function is. So today we looked at the max walk speed function. What that was doing is this max walk speed function. Uh, is just simply multiplying the number that you get from the timeline times 1500 and it's setting that as the max walk speed and it's also getting the character reference for the movement from the outside so while well, we could just have the character reference here because this is not something that will be changing often we just have it on the outside for now because uh we feel like it let's go back to the event graph so let's see the difference between of uh, function and uh, a node, right? Let me move this over here. I'm going to use this test as a thing for our function. So let's leave the macro aside for now. So for instance, I want to create it so that I have a function uh, which adds a multiplicator value to this, right? Let me do int times float. It multiplies the value by 10. And anytime you want a number to be multiplied by 10 and to set that as the float variable, either you can put both of these nodes or you can collapse this into a function. Right? So now that you have collapsed this into a function, you can change this name. The value of float variable holder right set value of float variable holder because that's literally what it does it just sets the value of our float variable holder and the value is required to have uh, this part uh, an input value so similar to what nodes uh, collapsed nodes were um, you can see you have a return value and an input value. So these work the exact same way where you can add more inputs or you can get more outputs out of it. Right. But the only difference is that these collapse nodes, while well, you can't copy and paste them, well, you can copy and paste them, but it becomes a brand new set of code instead of just repeating the same code again and again. You can just drag and drop this function itself. So this function is also callable on different blueprints as long as you have the reference for it. For instance, if I do, let me turn off con context sensitivity so I can show you guys. Get actor of class, right? And we're going to find our playable character Pratt. Playable character Pratt. Okay, and so this is the return value, right? So this return value refers to this entire blueprint. So now if I search for set value of float variable holder, this is the function that we just created over here. So if I go inside this, if I create a, an extra output pin here, I'm going to name this um, Yeehaw. I go Texas, right? Uh, if I compile this now, you can see that in the event graph, Yeehaw gets updated right here, but it also will also get updated everywhere else. So the main takeaway from this is that functions are interlinked between blueprints. So you can call them from other blueprints, you can set them from other blueprints, and you can use them in other blueprints. Okay. And finally, um, 
they are also replicatable. So instead of you having to copy and paste it over where it will create brand new set of code, you can just use the same code block over and over again. So you see how print string is a function that is predefined by Unreal, right? It does something and uh, 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 it has a, a set of pins that does something, okay? This is the same thing as the print string, except that this is a user created function. So you can do that. Okay, just make sure like as long as this is referenced in the same blueprint where it was created, it's fine. But if you're using it on a different blueprint, then you need to make sure the target is connected to a proper reference. Okay. And that leads us to the final thing, which is, uh, let me go ahead and copy this outside. Let me just do this for now, actually. Okay. So if you go inside this, it's getting the float variable. Yeah, don't need the jiha anymore. Okay. So what this print string is doing right now is it's reading the value of the float variable holder from the timeline, and then it is printing it out. So instead of it printing it out, we can collapse this into a node so we can copy it over. We can collapse this into a function so we can use it over multiple blueprints or we can collapse this to a macro. So macro is similar to a function in the sense that you can drag and drop as many macros as you want, right? This is something you wanna, if you have a piece of code that is getting used very often and you're tired of like writing it over and over again, you can just create a macro for it. And inside the macro itself, like you can do the same thing you can do with nodes as well as with functions. You know, you have the inputs and you have the output. You can add parameters to it. You can remove parameters from it. You can take and plug in pins into the inputs and the outputs. And uh, it will automatically get updated on the outside with the macros, right? And the text color, the inflow, because those are the ones that we selected. The only difference between uh, a macro and a function is that this macro isn't callable on other blueprints, right? You see, there's no uh, target reference here, right? So you can't call this macro onto uh, this uh, onto this uh, particular blueprint. If you try to copy it over, so if I like, click copy, if I go here and try to paste it, if I press Control V, uh, it won't allow you to paste it. But if you want, you can copy it with Control C. If you copy paste it, it's just yeah, see, you can't, you just can't have that uh, new macro. If I search for it, turn off context sensitivity, I can't have that. But if I search for the set variable holder, you can see this is still appearing on the function that we created because that is a character function that we can use. So that is the main difference. All right, that is going to be all in terms of what we learned in this class. Tomorrow, we're going to start looking at the animations and how we are playing them uh, for combat and hopefully start blending stuff with it. So anything that I taught today for animation towards the end of the class, I will be repeating it tomorrow. So I'm going to include that in tomorrow's video instead. See you.